Hello and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician and today we're going to start working on getting this engine removed. Uh, I'm not going to follow any uh, the work instructions really. I'm just going to move from the front of the car backwards. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to reference the, the work instructions but I'm not going to actually like go step by step by step and and you know do each individual step to letter the T. Um, so um, but I'll, I'll definitely give as much information as possible and uh, try to show you the steps. Since I had to bring the car back home, I did have to bring home um, a portion of my tools from work. You can see them right there. In the back of the trusty old Honda, I also had to get a uh, engine stand or a engine leveler. We're going to see how that thing works out uh, since I did have to, um, I was borrowing one. That's how, that's how I got the engine in the back of here originally when I had to bring it back home. So uh, it was about time I actually just got my own. So um, it was only about 50 bucks, something like that. So we'll see how the AutoZone special holds up to, uh, to that. Okay, first thing what we're going to do is we're going to remove the fan, which means we got to get the fan clutch in there. Um, now, the fan is held on by an 8 millimeter Allen, and you definitely need a holder for that um, because uh, you have to hold the pulley right here. You have to hold that thing still so you can undo that bolt. Now, um, you can't use a screwdriver. I mean, if you have a strong enough screwdriver, you can do that, but you you probably really shouldn't. Um, and uh, actually, I know you shouldn't. Ask me how I know. Well, I'm glad you asked me how I know because it broke. Cheap old screwdriver. It was actually like a T20 or something like that. Actually, no, no, T15. Somewhere right there. Yeah, anyways. Um, but um, I did have a thought that one thing that could work is if you uh, were able to get one of the ratchet, uh, not ratchet, the strap type oil filter wrenches uh, from like a, a auto parts store or something like that, and you had the belt off, you could actually get the strap around that pulley to kind of hold it still. Um, you probably don't, you don't want to use the chain type because that'll um, probably cut grooves and um, do some nasty stuff inside uh, to the pulley, and you don't want to do that because you don't want that to chew up the belt at all. So. Um, we're going to take that off right now. Um, I've actually already loosened the pulley, but I'm going to go ahead and or loosen the bolt. 45 Newton meters is the torque on that 8 millimeter Allen. And um, if it's been on there a while, it's going to seem like it's uh, a lot more than that. But that's what it should be uh, torqued down to. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off right now. There we go. That's it. Now I am, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up replacing this uh, fan clutch uh, when it goes back in because, um, I mean, I'm not going to go this far into this thing and just have to have it overheat because this fan clutch is toast. But so I'm going to replace it anyways because I don't know the condition of it. I don't know what's up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Now, when you reinstall it, you do want to pay attention that the stamped numbers the part numbers go towards the front of the car not the rear so that's the proper installation one other thing i wanted to show you guys is i was able to get the exhaust split it was kind of rusted pretty well right there um, and i ended up breaking one of these clamps because i had to pound it off that way because it was rusted at the other end of that now i do want to mention that i am not working or doing this in an abandoned house this is, that's just how my floor looks. When we bought the house, the, uh, the, the floor looked epoxy coated, but as it turns out, it's just freaking beige paint and it's just peeling off. So whatever, that's my fault for not paying attention closer. But, um, this exhaust is ridiculously heavy. This right here is probably 60, 70 pounds, just this half. And this half, this half is, is heavy as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and not put this back on. I'm just going to leave this. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to hook up some kind of exhaust to get that to the back of the car, but um, I'm going to have to take um, uh, hook some kind of exhaust up to this. But I'm not putting mufflers back on it. It's just going to be the cats. And uh, hopefully it sounds pretty good. Another thing I wanted to point out, um, when I get to taking off the flex disc from the drive shaft or separating the drive shaft from the, uh, from the transmission, when I take the flex disc off, the engine or the transmission has to be in neutral uh, so either this i'm gonna have to lift up the back end of this car a little bit more um or take the back tires off or both um but that's gonna because right now the tires touching the ground still so um that's gonna have to happen before i can separate those two 
Well, now you can see how much more room you actually have in front here. You have a good what, six, eight inches right here, probably more like six, um, between the uh, condenser and the engine, which uh, will give us a lot more uh, room when coming forward when we're pulling the engine out. Um, I just noticed that it uh, looks like the tensioner is uh, the not tensioning properly. I know you have an adjustment right there, uh, but at the same time, though, I haven't done anything to it. I mean, I was just checking it, and it, it's... You know, you can see just pulling up on the belt, not very hard. There doesn't seem to be very much spring in there. I mean, I can actually take the belt and pull it off the pulley, which I shouldn't be able to do that. That should have enough tension on it um, for that, which, I mean, maybe, maybe it is just an adjustment, but I may have to uh, replace that tensioner as well. So there's another thing that I was looking at that I, I honestly don't remember if I removed it or not. Um, is that contact right there. I don't remember ever taking that off, but it looks like something was there because you can see right here you have clean and then dusty, clean and dusty. So I don't see any cables or any wires or connectors laying about, so um, maybe one of you guys can uh, give me a shout out, let me know where that, where that goes, um, because uh, I'll, I'll look it up either way. Um, but if one of you guys knows, then I'm gonna... Um, uh, where that goes um, this so then it you know I could I could make sure I have that hooked up properly if if something actually goes there I don't know um, but I don't see anything laying around there we go there also had a little bit of uh, rodent munching on here so um, yeah you can see right there also you can see some on where is it at there it is rodent munching right there Hopefully they didn't get into too much of the wiring or anything else. There's a little bit of a munch on that right there. If that is a munch, I'm not sure. They do love to eat wires. So um, I'm going to have to be real careful, pay a lot of attention to, to that um, when I get back together. Also, uh, one thing I'm going to do, i got to take off that. Um, oh, that's what i got to do. Let me show you guys. Harness. Got the new hard doing this one hand. Here is the new upper engine harness for the engine because this one is like I said, it's a lot of this stuff I'm doing because I'm not gonna get this far into it and then have to take everything back apart. So I might as well just replace it. You can see manufacture date 2012 and uh like i said there was uh, only two in the country that's one of them uh two brand new ones that is from the dealership in the country and that's one of them so snagged it while i could uh i'm gonna have to rebuild the lower one that goes um to the uh, starter and alternator um, down there um and i also have a uh which connects down there somewhere but i did bring home uh the harness from a uh, 112 engine that um, has the uh, the starter lug on it and all that stuff. So um, I'll go through that. I'll do that in a video of at least attempting to rebuild that harness, you know, um, and uh, and um, getting it, uh, you know, able to install in here. So um, let's get right to it. Here's that harness that was donated to me. Um, right here you can see here's one of the lugs for the, that's part of the alternator right there. That could be a starter, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, this section might not be long enough. But this big old one right here is all big um, uh, heavy gauge wire. So that I should probably be able to, to um, use to replace the one on uh, Project Gramps here. And then use whatever wires from in here i mean the, the colors aren't going to match up and they probably won't match up unless by some miracle i have all the same wires um but we're going to get that to um rebuild that harness um so i can yeah so i can start it and charge it well i need to apologize if it's a little windy or there's a lot of noise coming from the phone or maybe there not be i don't know i got a new phone so it's um it might uh have better noise canceling i don't know um but it is you can see project uh gapel sauce right here tires a little flat I put, was trying to put air in it, and the valve stem uh, cracked because it's probably 20 years old. Um, but 
little breezy out here. So if you hear any wind, that's why. Now, doing the uh, belt, getting the belt off, um, whether there's a, uh, I, I didn't take the time to figure out how to release the tensioner. So I do have a special tool for removing the belt. It's a razor. Bestest belt removal tool ever. I also have a new belt, which I, I showed in the parts videos, but... Actually, did I? Did I get a new belt? Should have got that at AutoZone when I went. Because, as you can see, this thing is done. Done skis. This thing's almost a gator rack now. That's a uh, good year belt. For all you guys that don't know, they make a belt called a gator back that has cuts in it like this. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just to hide the belt cracking. I don't know. Well, you got the belt off. You do want to check your pulleys to see if they uh, are noisy or how they feel when you spin them. All these are pretty much, these are good. That's right there, nice and smooth. Your air pump right there, nice and smooth. Uh, water pump right here, nice and smooth. Uh, alternator, nice and smooth. Crankshaft, <laughs> kidding. Um, power steering pump, nice and smooth. And AC compressor, nice and smooth. But this one, see if you can hear it. A little crusty. So, but like I said, I'm, I'm gonna replace that tensioner anyways. So that'll come with a new pulley on it. So really what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get everything that's not attached to the engine, that's attached to um, the, uh, the fender wall down here and uh, the vacuum lines, the fuel lines, stuff like that. And then you got your electrical connectors and your electrical wiring that goes over there, back there, disconnected from the engine itself. You got your two coil wires, one that goes to this one that are, there's your two coils are down in here. You can see it. One coil, two coil, and those wires just go right here to the center of the distributor cap. And then you got this one over here that comes to the center of this one. So um, I'm just going to disconnect these uh, coil wires and just tuck them down in there. And then uh, disconnect the vacuum right here for the brake booster. That goes down over here. Oops, sorry for the jiggly phone. That goes down here and threads in right there. And then I'm going to take off the... Um, the fuel lines they go right here fuel line right there to that side of the rail and then there's another fuel line that goes back to the back to the other side of the rail you can see it right back there goes back to the other side so um, that's what I'm gonna take off right now and uh, let's get right to it. okay so uh, when you're taking things apart one thing you want to do is you want to um, either do what I'm doing, take video, take pictures, stuff like that, so you know how things go, how things are routed, stuff like that. It does help when going back together. That was honestly my main purpose between, be, uh, behind doing these videos, is so I have a reference um, to how this goes back together. And I mean, not because the, the, the work instructions only go so far, and they only tell you so much. They don't say route this here, put this specifically like this. Um, it just basically says this is how you take it out this is how you put it back in and it's not going to tell you that this wire goes to you know right here routed this certain way so it's stuff like that you can see this coil right here the one in the front goes right here to the closest coil and then this one over here goes down and then all the way across to that coil or to that distributor cap right there then that coil this one this one over there so um that's uh, a good idea to, to keep that in mind when, when doing your own work also, um, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to uh, replace the, uh, uh, the spark plug wires. That's not a huge job to do. Um, you just have to take off the, uh, the head covers over there, or the, the, the spark plug wire covers on each cylinder head. Um, you got down over there, down over there. And it's not that, much, not that bad. So um, I'm going to see how they go first. And also that the uh, spark plug wire set is like 150 bucks, 200 bucks easy. So... Um, these ones are alright, I'm gonna see, on the, the other, the engine that I have, a lot, uh, like, two or three of the contacts actually came out, 
um, which I'm not sure if those can be reinstalled or not, but um, I have enough spark plug wires between the two engines to make another set, so it's, I, I should be all right. You know what, I may have spoken too soon. Um, there, I just found the work instructions for setting the tension on that, so I'm gonna give that a go first before I replace it and see what's up. Like, it's it's not hard. It's right there on the front, just like these coil wires um, and the spark plug wires, stuff like that. It's right here, so um, if I need to replace it later, yeah, no big deal. It's it, it doesn't take that long. So, these can get stuck on there if they've been on there a while, so if you have a good pair of pliers, stuff like that, um, or if you're going to replace them, then it doesn't really matter how you destroy them. Taking them off, but they can get stuck, so if you have like a, uh, I like to use these big old long hooks um, that uh, um, you can get in there, or even a little hook set. If you have one that's the hook's a little smaller, you can get in there and kind of work it around the boot and unstick it from the plastic. That helps too. So... This one's off, but um, as you can see, it's on the very bottom. So you're gonna have to dig out all those spark plug wires just to be able to trace this one back over there. So um, that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, one quick thing I wanted to point out that it was just cool to me because, like I said, a lot of the, this is the first time I've been I've taken this much of, uh, apart uh, on one of these, and um, we don't get too many cars of this vintage uh, in the shop, so. Um, every time I see something that, uh, some kind of technology or something on, on these that, uh, we don't have on the new cars, it, it's, it, uh, just surprises me and it blows my mind. One thing I wanted to point out was the fuel cooler. You got the refrigerant that goes through the top and out the bottom, and then you have the fuel lines that come in through the sides right there. Maybe it's to help from keeping, uh, uh help to, uh, keep the car from getting vapor locked, um, when, uh, when the the uh, after driving it gets hot and the the fuel vaporizes maybe it's to prevent that i don't know but i just thought it was cool i'm you know, looking at detaching the the fuel lines and i'm like why is it going through the refrigerant line and i'm like hey it's a fuel cooler so just something i thought i'd point out anyways on to the next thing i'm going to take off this vacuum line here and then i'm going to have to remove it from that grommet right there i'm probably gonna have to remove that grommet and pull it forward because there is a check valve in there um between um that point and the booster so i'm gonna have to do that these are 19 millimeters i think they are yep 19 look at that i actually have the right tools this time because i actually brought them from work so it's a 19 and a 17. <laughs> still got the right tools anyways 17 right here to hold it 19 right there to break it loose And that's it and these plastic lines right here you do kind of want to be careful with it don't bend them too much because i mean this is this car is what 28 years old no yeah 28 years old and these can get fairly brittle and break so the one over at the booster let's see if i can get that here that one right there is also a 19 there's not really another nut to hold it comes out like that and then we're gonna have to fish it out that way next I'm gonna take off these fuel lines right here that one this one right here I'm just gonna you know what I don't even think I'm gonna have to take that one off because it's not in the way I'm gonna have to disconnect this one though and then probably tuck it up somewhere I'm gonna have to wrap a rag or uh, something around there to keep the fuel from coming out so um, it is a 14 on this part right here by the rail and a 17 that's on the actual hose now uh, i never checked for fuel pressure but i have cranked this thing quite a bit not recently but um we'll see if any fuel comes out of there and stuff like that if it sprays out cool i got fuel pressure if not then um like i said it's been a while so the fuel pressure might have equalized in there so who knows Oh, 
Oh, you got some dripping out. It smells like gas. Well, got a little bit of gas coming out. Doesn't smell too fresh, but it doesn't smell too bad either. I've smelled worse. The other fuel line right here just connects right there behind where that one did. Next, I'm going to remove the throttle cable from the mounting bracket on the engine. This, you just push this through, and then you're gonna need to get this cable through that notch right there. Then this is just a tab, you gotta pinch that, and then it comes out this way. Next, we're gonna remove these vacuum lines right here. You got that one right there. You have this uh, tan one right here. And then, um, the, which those, the tan one and the black one right here. You have the black one that goes way down there to the passenger side of the transmission and the tan one goes right there. So um, I'm gonna remove these two, which the black one goes to that vacuum solenoid right there. And the tan one goes right here that splits off into those three right there. So. I'm gonna remove that, and then the the black one actually don't I haven't like I said I haven't removed that from the side of the transmission yet, so I'm gonna have to try to get that off. And um, but this white one is is pretty much loose, so I could I could this one goes to the other side of the transmission, so I'll I'll remove that one too, and then um, uh, we'll go. So here is where that black vacuum tube is connected to right here, this elbow. Um, now I got to be really careful not to pull too hard on this and try to get that. Um, uh, removed from there because I don't want to break the, the nipple off this um, vacuum actuator right here. So um, that's what uh, we're going to do next. And then this connector, you can see it right here. All this does is lift up and that's it. You just got to jiggle it loose. Just like that. Then also you're going to have to disconnect this single wire connector right here just in these little plastic tabs right here those may or may not break so and it just separates right here with this little spring detent and then all we got to do is feed this harness through and just pretty much lay it on the engine I should take a peek at this harness. See some of the tapes coming off. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and crunchy. Good thing I ordered that one. Next, removing this. Now this does not come with the new harness. This connects down here. You can say, see if you can see down there. Connects to the looks like connects to the throttle valve down there. So I'm gonna have to be gentle removing this. Now, I may or may not have to loosen or remove the cowling here, which I really don't want to do because it's in pretty decent condition. So I don't want to um, damage it in any way during removal of, this, of that. So I'm going to try to find a way to uh, wiggle it out, possibly. If not, I loosen this side, So, um, but that opening right there is not big enough to get that connector through. And all this does is right here, there's a tab. To release it then it snaps open just like that and then it pulls up so um, I gotta figure that out okay here we go now if you pull up the uh, rubber seal not this one this one goes on this channel but there's another one that goes right here um, you see a little metal clip right here that fits right here and holds this piece on so once you remove that you can just pull straight up and this 
sit over here. This is one of those times when um, it helps to have the uh, one of these long uh, picks like this. You don't want one too sharp. You can see it's kind of blunted at the end. But um, when the hose is stuck to the metal like that, to the to the aluminum line, you just want to be able to get that in there, and then uh, you kind of work it around there to get the hose unstuck, and then it's pretty easy to remove it. Then the hose just gets pulled through and tucked right there because it's pretty difficult to get way down there to where it actually connects to the uh, to the back of the engine there. So I think, uh, well, except for the um, the starter harness and the alternator harness, we're almost done uh, removing things. Actually, pretty much everything from this side um, we're done removing. Now I need to get that coolant line uh, disconnected over there. So that's next. This one is really easy to get to. As you can see, it's just that one hose clamp right there and there's not really anything above it. So, um, that's going to be something else we're going to use that long pick for. So uh, I'm going to get that hose clamp off there, then, uh, get this, uh, tucked out of the way, probably put it up here somewhere. So, oh, also got to make sure to drain the coolant first. Um, I already did that uh, a while ago, so nothing's really coming out of this. Well, that's it for today. Um, I'm going to finish up tomorrow. I'm going to keep posting these. I'm going to try to work on this all weekend until I get this engine out. So, um, hopefully I'll have another video for you tomorrow. Then, um, uh, with the rest of getting the engine out, hopefully I have it out by tomorrow. That would be awesome. But until then hit subscribe, give me the thumbs up. See you next week or tomorrow or whenever.